We try to be down to earth here on the morning show, but we're not going to be for this one. The words space weather may conjure up images of intergalactic tornadoes and star filled blizzards, but it actually refers to the electrically charged particles and radiation from the sun. I know that's a lot to take in. After a quiet few years, our sun is once again ramping up with activity. But what does that mean for us down here on land? Joining us this morning, Dan Seaton, a NOAA solar scientist. Good morning to you. Good morning. All right, Dan. So we are Floridians here in, in Florida and in Georgia, where most of our viewers are. We watch hurricanes. We watch thunderstorms. You're now saying we need to watch what's going on much further away up there, too. Yeah, that's right. Uh, just like there are storms that happen on Earth, like hurricanes and thunderstorms, as you talked about, there are actually storms in space. You know, the sun is an active star, and when it becomes especially active, it can send out clouds of magnetic field and charged particles that interact with the Earth's atmosphere and magnetic field and can do all sorts of uh, damage to satellites in orbit and disrupt communications on Earth and even knock down power grids sometimes. And what does that mean for us, the everyday people living here, uh, you know, down in Earth. Yeah, you know, I, I think for the, the average person, the effects of space weather are pretty minimal. You know, your GPS might be a little less accurate if there's a big event. You might actually see the aurora farther south than normal, and that's something that's kind of fun. But the, the real risks are to people who manage big technological systems, satellites, power grids, um, uh, communications networks, that kind of thing. Okay, so... You know, scientists are keeping a close eye on the sun with these different satellites. Why is it important to understand what's going on with the sun for us? Well, you know, as we talked about, there are these big space storms, space weather that can affect us on Earth, and they happen pretty quickly. Uh, once a, an event happens on the sun, a solar flare, a big sort of explosion on the sun, within a matter of maybe 30 minutes, the first effects can be felt on Earth. So we have to be really well prepared uh, so that we can properly respond and take steps to mitigate the effects on our technology. Are we okay? <laughs> is, is this normal? Because anytime that you say an explosion on the sun, I think that might raise some eyebrows. Yeah, it sounds very scary. And indeed, these are really energetic events that happen on the sun. But the truth is that they're very common and we've been watching these things for a long time. So, you know, the risks, I think, uh, to actual life on Earth, to people on Earth, to uh, technology on Earth are pretty small. And we have a really robust system where we have uh, alerts and warnings and watches, just like they have for Earth weather, uh, that help the people who manage these systems be really well prepared to mitigate their effects. Okay, I want to change things up a little bit. I'm going to throw a curveball here because uh, COVID-19 and the pandemic and the shutdowns have changed a lot of things, including I've heard a lot about the atmosphere. Earth's atmosphere is a little bit cleaner. You can see a little bit further. We have more visibility. Obviously, the California wildfires are affecting that. How does that deal with space? Are we able to see more out there and maybe learn a little bit more because the air in between us? Or am I just totally throwing you an oddball question? No, I think it's a very reasonable question. I mean, the atmosphere is, is for people who do astronomy, a really important factor in how well we can make the measurements that we make. For the stuff that I work on for space weather, most of the observations come from space because the, the stuff we're looking at on the sun, the X-rays, the ultraviolet, don't actually penetrate the Earth's atmosphere, which is actually great for humanity because it protects us. It gives us an extra layer of insulation between the sun and us. Uh, so, you know, what happens with the atmosphere in terms of how we are monitoring the sun actually turns out not to be such a big deal because we're really using satellites, the GOES satellites that monitor Earth weather also are looking at the sun at the same time. And so, you know, what's happening in the atmosphere doesn't really affect our ability to monitor the uh, space weather conditions. Sure, sure. Certainly, you know, an interesting conversation. And I think I could go on a little bit more with you, but... We do have to wrap it up, Dan Seaton. If people want to learn more, maybe it's a good time for those kids. If they're homeschooling them this year, doing that virtual learning, you can go to the website and, and kind of learn more about things that are far, far away. Where do they go? Yeah, the best place to go is spaceweather.gov. There's information about the solar cycle and how space weather is going to increase uh, in severity over the next few years. And you can also actually see pictures of the sun in real time, exactly what's happening now, the same thing that our space weather forecasters are looking at to make their forecasts. Dan Seaton, University of Colorado, NOAA solar scientist. Thanks for your time. Have a great day.